As we write code, it is inevitable that we will introduce bugs and things will not always go as expected. Generally speaking, developers will manually verify their changes, but this can be time consuming and developers might not catch everything. To reduce the risk of introducing bugs, we can create automation tests to verify our code for us. There are several forms of automation testing, but this video will focus on unit testing. Unit testing focuses on the smallest possible unit, that smallest possible unit being a single function. Once again, we will look back at a previous function we created, 2 centimeter. What if we decided we want this function not only to take in feet and inches, but we also wanted to add support for yards? By introducing this parameter yards at the front, we've effectively just broken our function, and anywhere this function is used is now also broken. We, as a developer, might be focused on just our new use case, and for our new use case, maybe the function works as we expect, but we want to know immediately that we've broken other code. In this case, what we want is a unit test for our function 2 centimeter that will tell us if we've broken any existing functionality. We'll put our function back to how it was, and then we'll look into how we can create automation tests for this function. To create unit tests for our function, we're going to be using the framework Jest. Jest is the most popular framework in TypeScript and JavaScript. In order to use Jest, we're going to first need to install some dependencies. We'll say npm install, we'll install Jest, at type slash Jest, as well as TS Jest. To reiterate npm a little bit, when we ran this command, we installed three dependencies. However, because those dependencies rely on other libraries as well, we actually had 297 different packages added into our project. The three dependencies we added are going to be added to our dependencies in the package.json, and the rest of the packages will also have their versions added into our package lock.json. Now that we've installed the necessary dependencies, we need to do one more thing, and that's create a file called jest.config.js. And in this file, we need to provide some configurations. We'll have our preset be to ts jest, and then the test match is going to say which files jest should run as test files. And with this, we're now ready to create our first tests. To organize our tests nicely, we're going to first create a folder called test, and in this folder, we'll create a test file. Now, normally speaking, the naming convention for the test file will be the same as the file that we're testing, but instead of just .ts, it will be .test.ts. So in our case, we're going to be writing a test for this two centimeter function from the 04 functions.ts file. So what we'll do is we'll create a file 04 functions.test.ts. Inside this function, we'll start by saying describe. Now the describe keyword for Jest is going to be used to create a test suite or basically to create a group of tests. And we want to create a name for this group of tests. We're creating a group of tests for the function two centimeter. So we'll say describe two centimeter as that's what we're going to be testing and we'll have multiple tests for that function. And then we'll give it a callback function, which is the function Jest will invoke for this group of tests. To create individual tests, we'll use the test keyword and we'll name each test case. There are a lot of different conventions for how you can name your test cases. For now, we'll just go with a clearly descriptive name and we'll say case, we'll say six feet, three inches. And for this test case, we also give it a callback function and this callback function will be invoked for this individual test. For the test code itself, the first thing we want to do is we want to actually run our function and see what value we get from our function. So we'll say const, the actual value we get from our function is going to be two centimeter, and we'll call it with six feet, three inches. Now that we have the actual value that we get by running our two centimeter function, we need to tell Jest what we expect this actual value to equal. So we'll say expect, our variable actual, and then we'll say dot two equal, and what we expect it to equal. In this case, six feet three inches should be 190.5. To run our tests, we'll update one more file. We'll come into our package.json, and this test script that was created for us, we'll change it to just run jest. And to now run our tests, we'll say npm run, 
And then the name of the script, which is test, after Jest has run, it will give us a summary of the results. If we look back, we have one test suite that was run and one test suite passed. We created one test suite by using the describe keyword. So the one test suite we have is the two centimeter test suite. We can see that here as well, the two centimeter test suite. Inside of that test suite, we had a total of one test, which also passed, and that was our one test case, six feet, three inches. To see what this would look like if it failed, let's go ahead and break our function and see the results. We now see the one test suite fails, the one test failed, and it will also give us some descriptions as to what actually happened. We can see that the case two centimeter, case six feet, three inches failed. It had expected 190.5, but because we broke the equation, what it actually received was 191.25. We'll put our function back to how it was, and then we'll add another test case. To add another test case, we're just going to copy this existing case. For this case, let's just do zero feet, zero inches, and when we invoke the function, we'll call it with zero. Remember, we only need to provide feet as inches will already be defaulted to zero. And what we expect this to equal is zero. When we run our test again, we see now that we have one test suite still, but inside of that test suite, we have two test cases. And here we can see those two cases as well. In our case now, the one suite passes, both test case pass. Something really cool that Jess can do is it can actually watch our files and rerun every time we save changes. So we'll come here and we're gonna update our test script to be Jest dash dash watch all. This time when we run our tests, it shouldn't just end the tests, it should run the tests and then it should sit there waiting and watching. Here we can do some pretty cool things. If we're trying to just test like a single suite, we could add some either like file matchers or test matchers to just run the tests we want, um, or we can just run failed tests. There's some options here, but what's really cool is this is watching our code and every time we save changes, it'll rerun our tests. So if we go back to our function and we break this function again, it automatically reruns. It shows me one failed, one passed. Well, the zero feet, zero inches still actually passed because even though we broke our function, we didn't break it enough to break all of the test cases. We just broke certain test cases. So we'll go ahead and fix our function again. It'll rerun automatically, and we can now see both our tests are passing. Something we can do if we're creating a lot of tests is kind of parameterize our tests. So we'll say const test cases equals, and we'll create an array of test cases. For our test cases, we can define an object with all the information needed for our test. So we'll say input is going to have a feet, how many feet we want it to have, and then inches, how many inches we want it to have. And then we can also say what our expected value is. In this case, it's going to be 190.5. And now we can create as many tests as we want. So we'll copy this whole thing. We'll create another test. For zero feet, zero inches, we expect zero. And then we'll add another test. Maybe we have three feet, five inches, and three feet, five inches should be 104.14. Now to run our tests, we're going to create a for loop. We'll iterate through our test cases. So we'll say const test case of test cases. And within this for loop, for each test case, we'll create a test, but we have the name to be dynamic based on the individual test case, where this is going to be test case dot input dot feet. And for inches, we'll have test case dot input dot inches. That way the name of our test is dynamic. We'll see now we actually have a whole bunch of tests being created, but they're not actually testing the right thing quite yet. We need to provide our test case the actual input. So we'll say test case dot input dot feet as the first parameter and test case dot input dot inches as the second parameter. Now we have a whole bunch of tests failing. I guess not a whole bunch, but we have two tests failing and that's because our expect is still using a hard coded value. So for our expect, we're going to have test case dot expected. And when we run it now, all of our tests pass, 
and they have their unique names, we need to remove the hard-coded test still. So we'll remove our hard-coded tests. And now, every time we want to create a new test, we can simply just add a new entry to our array. And then each test is very clear as to what is the input and what is the expected results. One last thing I want to do is add a reporter to Jest so that we can visualize the results a little bit better than just seeing them in the terminal. To do this, first we need to exit out of Jest. You can either type the letter Q, or if everything else is not working, just spam control C like I do. And then we can add a new dependency. We're going to say npm install Jest HTML reporter. And then we need to go to our jest.config.js file and configure our reporter. I'm going to paste some configuration I already have, but you can configure things such as like what the report title is going to be, if you want to include the log statements and the failure messages and how the test should be sorted. We'll come back down to our terminal. We'll run our tests again. And this time when we run our tests, it should create a file, testreport.html. To see what this file looks like, we can right click it. We'll say copy path. And then in our browser, we can actually just paste that path and it'll load this HTML file into the browser. And we have like this nice clean report showing us all of our test cases. One thing to note is that as you save changes and your tests are rerun, you will need to manually refresh this file to get the updated results. It can be a little bit useful when debugging. Sometimes it's a little hard to see everything in the console. So if we go back to our tests, we'll once again break our function. And when we look back at the report when it's broken, we can kind of a little bit more easily see all of the tests that are failing. We can see zero feet, zero inches is still passing. Three feet, five inches is failing. Uh, we can see what the expected was and what the received is, as well as six feet, three inches is also failing. And here again, we can see what we expected and what we actually received. We covered a lot. So let's go back through and break down everything we did. The first thing we did is we added dependencies. We added Jest, we added the HTML reporter, uh, TS Jest, as well as like type support for Jest. When we added those dependencies, it installed a whole bunch of additional packages, and all of those additional packages had their versions updated in the package JSON. Uh, if we look at this file, this file is actually now more than 3,000 lines long because of how many packages have been added to our project at this point. Once we installed Jest as a dependency, we needed to configure Jest. We needed to configure it to say that we're doing TS Jest. We configured which files to match as test files. And then we configured our reporter to generate nice HTML reports when we run our tests. After that, we also updated our test script to run Jest. And when we run Jest, we added the watch all flag that way, Jest will watch our files, and every time we save changes, Jest will rerun and give us immediate feedback whether we're breaking something or not. With everything now set up, we created a test folder to organize all of our tests. And inside of that test folder, we created our first test file. In the test file, we use the describe keyword to create a test suite, which is going to be a group of tests. And inside that test suite, we created an array of test cases. And then we iterate through that array of test cases and we create a individual test for each case. Now for each test case, we give the test a name. And then we run the function to see what we actually get when we run the code. And then we tell Jest what we expect that actual value to be. The reason that we set up different test cases for each scenario is because if one case fails, we'll still get feedback whether the other tests succeed or fail. Something else that I should mention is there are more methods that can be called than just two equals. If we were wanting to just compare like to be greater than, there's to be greater than, uh, to be less than, greater than or equal to. Uh, and actually if we just say dot to, we can see there's actually like a pretty significant number of methods available to us. If we want to see if something was null or truthy or undefined, there's all sorts of methods in here. I'm not going to cover all of them, but there's a lot of things that Jess can expect rather than just a strict equals expect.